Hello, everyone. It's Phil Jones for Projector Reviews, and joining me is Mark Major from Hisense. And today we're here to talk about one of their hot new products from in their laser TV lineup, which I'm actually reviewing, and I am actually in love with it. So, Mark, how are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you very much, Phil. Thanks for asking. Before we get started, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Meridio and AV Pro Edge, for helping us put on the Fall Projection Summit, where we talk about all the things related to projection systems to make sure you get the best performance in your home or office environment. So, Mark, you are here to talk about one of your new laser TVs. Which one is it? So, we just introduced our brand new L9G series product, which comes in two different screen sizes, the 100 and 120 inch. And and like I said, it's a great piece. Um, and you guys have been doing these for a long time because you found kind of a niche in the market. So because can you talk about the growth in screen sizes? Because high tense is involved in both projection as well as flat panels, correct? Correct. So, you know, I was just talking to somebody this morning. I, I remember years ago, because I've been around for a little while, we used to be happy selling a 30-inch TV set. Now, it's, forget about 85, 86. I mean, it's 100 or bigger. So, mm -hmm. you know, this product right here at 100 inch, you're, as you can see, it's roughly 36% more screen area than an 85 or an 86-inch TV. And then you go to 120 inch, it's just, it's huge. But the 120 inch is very... It just brings you right into the movie, very encompassing. It just, it, it really is a fabulous screen size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we talk about that all the time. I say, why measure your TV in inches when you can measure it in feet, right? <laughs> um, flat panels are getting bigger and bigger right. and bigger, but eventually get to a point where the price becomes, it becomes cost prohibitive. Um, you could get now, shockingly, an 85 inch per, um, uh, flat panel for four or 5,000 bucks. But when you jump to 100, you're talking 20 plus, right. and there's nothing really over 120 until you start talking technologies that are in the six figures. So when you're looking for the largest, most immersive experience, projection is still the way to go. And because of things like 4K, you could sit much closer to a larger image, and the image will still be clear and crisp. So the limitation is not really um, how close you're sitting, it's how much wall space you have to put right. the projector on. So this laser TV thing is a great solution because it allows you to have a large um, image in pretty much any room. So think of it as a TV replacement. And Mark, you guys kind of started this whole laser TV category, right? Yeah, right. In 2014, we introduced the industry's first short, you know, ultra short throw product. And uh, I still remember it being at CD. I think it was 2015, seeing it for the first time. And we've evolved, obviously, over the last six, seven years. So now we have two different series of products, not just the L9, but another series below it. And we see it as this a truly evolving category. Um, you know, we, you talked about screen size just a second ago. Much easier to deliver a uh, laser to television set into a customer saw, especially 120 inch. Once you get to that size, it's you really can't put a 120 inch panel through somebody's door. Not only they're not available really, but you're not going to get through somebody's front door of their house. Exactly. And we always joke about that. Trying to trying to get even an 85 inch TV up a New York walk up can be a quite a challenge. You know, and this actually provides you, like I said, a stunning picture day or night. Right. Um, um, up to and sizes up to 10 feet diagonal, which is absolutely um, amazing. The whole reason why people call them laser TVs is because of high sense. Because the official thing, what is it, is a smart ultra short throw 4K laser projector. But that's a mouthful, so everybody kind of likes the, ter the term laser TV, just like everybody calls you know um, facial tissue Kleenex because right. that is what that is what they think about. But when it comes to the laser TV, it is actually high sense. And like I said, you have generations, multiple generations of this, and you can see it. And I could see it as I review these particular um, projectors because I've reviewed three, um, the, the two generations before. This is my third generation of one that I've reviewed, and I, they keep getting better and better and more and more refined. Now, in order for it to be a TV replacement, it has to have, it has to solve a couple of things. It has to be able to be used day or night, 
It has to deliver a vibrant color, whether you use it day or night. It has to have all the functionality I expect in a flat panel TV for me to use it as a replacement. And one of the biggest things that terrified people about projectors is the old fashioned bulb that they used to have. And that problem has kind of has kind of went away because of your late uh, because of the fact that you guys are using um, lasers. But I guess you said there was kind of these five unique elements that are found in all high sense laser TVs, right? Yeah, that's correct. So, you know, obviously it's since we're talking laser TV, there is a laser component to the product. Mm -hmm. And obviously in the brand new L9, there's a triple laser, it's RGB, not just a single color product. Mm -hmm. And then we use the DMD, you know, chip, which is by Texas Instruments. Mm -hmm. And then our lens system, which we go to, to uh, Rico to get our source, our lens. Mm -hmm. The cooling system, we don't want anything to overheat. And really the big thing is the screen. Mm -hmm. That's why it's laser TV. We're actually giving you the display format. So not only just the UST, as you alluded to, we're giving you the screen. It's a system. It's a system. Exactly. And that's a big point. And we're going to talk in detail about the um, the laser and the screen. But there's a few things on here I just want to touch on right now. The first thing, the DMD um, or the DLP chip, uh, the cool thing about those is they're sealed which means things like dust and stuff like that, they're, they're not really impacted for it and they have a very long life expectancy. And one right. of the things that people like about a TV is I turn, I set it and forget it. I, and year, I don't have to do any maintenance, I just turn it on, I turn it off. And that's one of the benefits of laser combined with DLP. One of the biggest challenges that we've had with these, with these units is when you have a ultra short throw projector, it sits very, very close to the screen that you're projecting it up against. And when you do that, what happens is as it gets to the corners of the image, it can be a little out of focus. So right. the ability to precisely provide a sharp image edge to edge requires very good lenses. Think about all of those parts as ingredients. So you wanna make sure you use the best ingredients possible, but you still need a really good recipe. And that is where a company that's been doing it for a long time like Hisense comes in. The cooling system seems like it's something minor, but you don't want it to sound like a jet taking off while you're watching a movie. So it needs to keep the unit reliable and cool without drawing attention to itself because this unit is sitting right in front of you. So all of these things, so when we talk about the screen and the laser in more detail, those other things that seem maybe, maybe minor to you, like the lens and the cooling system and the, D and the DLP chip, all have a big impact on the performance of this system. And of course, what it looks like. So can you talk a little bit about the industrial design, Mark? Well, the, you know, instead of just being a square box, some seem to be, even our predecessor, more like a shoe box, it's rounded, has soft edges. I mean, even the, there's a slight gloss to the to the top of the unit, not in, so it's gonna, let's say, uh, interfere with the picture quality and it's not gonna dry your eyes away from it. But at least when it's turned off, it's a beautiful looking product, it's stunning. Whether it's a mesh speaker grill on in the front, the unique aluminum look to the side of the product, I, I don't know. It's it's the best looking ultra short throw that I've seen. Of course, then again, I do work for Hisense. It is our product. But And one feature I always joke about, because I, where I've worked before, it's black, right? It's not <laughs> a white box, right? It's actually darker. So kind of when the lights go down, it your eyes aren't drawn toward the product. It's drawn toward the picture. And that's a big point. I actually did review a white tricolor, and it, it does kind of stand out. And I have another um, uh, tricolor from a Chinese company sitting here, and yeah. it's gray, and it's larger. <laughs> so so now so it really calls attention to itself um, right. even when it's when it's off. So this the capabilities are better than the ones I reviewed in the past, and actually the chassis uh, this appears to be smaller. I'd have to measure it and remember my numbers, but it just seems smaller because of the way it was actually, the way the way to design it was the way it was done. But but the reason why we're really here is, um, and what had really generated a lot of excitement is the laser light source that is utilized in this projector. So can you talk about its lights, its um, tri-chroma light source? Well, it's a, it's a discrete RGB laser system. And so we're not using a color wheel in this product. Uh, and by doing so, I mean, we're going to get to a Rec 2020 or PT 2020 of 107%. So the colors are very rich and vibrant. And, you know, that's one of the huge benefits of going RGB versus a single laser. Normally, these projectors have um, a blue laser 
and a phosphor and a, 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 and a, or a, and a color wheel. And what happens is a lot of times people will see that as rainbow. If you're, you could be sensitive to that. Removing the color wheel helps eliminate a lot of that rainbow effect. Also, the quality of colors that you get come from the light sources being used. And the higher the quality light, the more colors you can reproduce. This projector, as you mentioned, can reproduce 107% of BT, BT 2020. What does that mean? That is the, that's beyond the standard that was actually defined for HDR, which is pretty impressive. And there isn't a flat panel out there that could do it, regardless of how much money you spend. So these days, because of its three color laser, it can reproduce colors that a normal TV cannot. For example, um, red of a London bus is outside of the color capability to a lot of LCD TVs. So you can, it kind of looks like a London bus, but it's not really the color. And the same thing with something like a stop sign. This can reproduce those colors accurately. And oh, by the way, I'm a testing guy. So what we did was I've, I've been reviewing the unit and we actually have tested it. We got to about 100% of BT 2020. But the one that's kind of interesting is most projectors struggle to get to what's called DCI-P3, which is what's used in most, most movies these days. Many of them have to apply color filters and everything else just to try to get to 100% of DCI-P3. This sucker, when I measured it, hit 143% in one of its um, accurate um, filmmaker modes. So it wasn't even cooked or cranked up at all. So this thing's coasting at almost nearly 50% more colors than what than most displays can do, which is pretty freaking awesome. The other thing too is we have all this color, right? But we also want, um, the, it also has to be bright and vivid. We have a brighter display with um, a wider amount of colors, you can make a bigger cube of colors. It's called color volume. The bottom of the triangle, that little rear thing at the bottom, indicates the gamut, how wide, 107%. The height is dictated by how much brightness you can generate. So the more brightness you have combined with the color gamut, you get a bigger cube of colors that you can reproduce. And this sucker is bright, right? 3,000 lumens. <laughs> That's much yeah. brighter than a predecessor. It is bright and colorful. Exactly. And on, like we mentioned, this is a TV replacement, and we want it to be maintenance-free. So you're looking at not only can you deliver 3,000 lumens, but for like 25,000 hours. How many years is that? Depends on what your movie watching is like. I mean, I calculate out for myself, it's 12 years of viewing. So between the laser light source and the sealed um, DLP optics, you end up with something that's pretty much maintenance free. It's super bright. It can reproduce colors that a flat panel cannot. So we're just going right down the boxes, checking those things that you would want if you wanted to have a TV replacement. Now, a lot of times when you have a huge amount of colors, it's almost it can almost be harder to use because it's like um, if it's like having a thousand horsepower in a car and having to drive at 55 miles an hour. It can actually be a little difficult. So better. Um, color tuning is critical, and that's where a major manufacturer like Hisense comes in. So can you talk about like things like the color temperature calibration? Well, we, we, we try to treat our, the, our laser TV just like it's a television set. So we apply our same technology in our TVs that we are doing on our laser TV. So again, trying to give you that accurate, true-to-life color and color temperature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I will say that you also have the Kalman calibration, and be, right. you can tell that you that Hisense makes TVs because right. the settings for calibration were very responsive. Um, most projectors, for example, only have like two point um, grayscale. This has 20 points, but I didn't even need it. I, but the two point was so good that a few clicks in the two point measured outstanding. So not only do you have this huge amount of colors, they are properly controlled and you can quickly calibrate them or make minor adjustments if you need to for your particular space. HDR is becoming more and more popular. What formats does the L9G support? So we, we support our HLG and we also support HDR. Mm -hmm. So HDR10 is used for like streaming if you and, and Blu-ray and HLG will be the thing that you will see live broadcast, Super Bowl right. football games, the Grammys and stuff like that. So you know that you are good to go in the future. And I will tell you that I looked at this in HDR 
And a, even though this projector has a lot of brightness and a really wide color gamut capability, it still can't hit all the max brightness that's found in HDR content. So it has to apply some form of tone mapping. And the tone mapping on this laser TV is very good. It's probably one of the best um, that I've seen on a um, ultra short throw smart laser projector with or laser TV. So, so really, really good um, HDR reproduction. Speaking of, uh, of laser TVs, uh, my friend Robert at Value Electronics actually did a shootout uh, of um, laser TVs this year. Normally he's been doing television shootouts for years. I used to be the guy from Sony that would bring that TV and say, look at how nice this Sony TV is. But this year he did one on, um, on laser TV. So how'd you guys fare? What, what happened in that contest? Well, let me tell you, it was a great shootout. Uh, there was a couple of brands that were there. I personally learned a lot watching everybody, how they interact with the product. But what I learned about it is that we won the shootout. That's what I learned. We, we placed out of the 15 categories, we won 11 categories. So I was pretty happy with that. Okay, And excellent. our company was too. Exactly. Now, I will point out that if you look at something like an, um, an L9G, it commands a premium. So even the ones, the other projectors they use in a shootout were tri-color um, laser TVs. A tri-color lighting system is going to command a premium. It's more expensive. So by the time you add the you add that and you add better lenses and better sound and more capabilities, it does command a premium. Can you get a less expensive laser TV? You can, but you get what you pay for. So so this projector is designed to sit at the top of the laser TV heap. So while um and so while it does command a premium price, it delivers premium performance. I wanna I really wanna stress that. Speaking of premium performance, let's also talk about the sound because video without audio is just surveillance. So the sound is another thing you have to think about when we talk about a laser TV. So what are some, some of the features when it comes to sound on this projector? Well, we, are, you know, we have a very robust uh, Dolby Atmos system in there. It's, it's a 40 watt system. And then we combine it. If you're not happy with the onboard audio system, we have a WISA package also for the folks that want a simple connection for a wireless audio system. And you can, there are brands out there, like by Enclave, even Klipsch, that are WISA ready, that can plug right into our product. So you can have an enhanced audio experience to go with your enhanced visual experience. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk a little, see this Visa, Visa is that what it's called? Um, yeah, it's kind of, um, and basically it helps eliminate the wires going to individual speakers and need to have another black box. So if you wanted a 7.1 um, system, you would just get the speakers to position them around the room and they would communicate with the projector, correct? That is correct, but keep in mind, you still have to plug the speakers in for power. They're not completely wire wireless. Yeah. <laughs> and there's actually, uh, a with the Enclave, there's actually, it looks like a small black puck that plugs right into the back of our projector. That's how it communicates with the projector and how everything works. So you can have a great sound to start built in, and it right. does sound really good. And then you can move up if you need more to something such as um, this uh, WISA ready. It also has um, art capability as well, correct? Yes, that is correct. And it's correct on our, on our HDMI ports one and uh, ports one has the uh, eARC built right into it, okay. which is, you know, that's very handy because you know what, maybe they just want to add a sound bar possibly. Mm -hmm. yeah, possible. or, even, or even if you have a high-end sound system, there's right. different levels of ARC there's ARC and it's eARC. They both stand for audio return channel um, and it's sent via HDMI. And this is important because a lot of people are looking at um, streaming services that are built into the projector. Many of us get our, get our, um, our TV shows now, our, our movie content, everything from, from services such as you know, Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus, um, YouTube, Hulu. That's how I, we've pretty much unplugged from the world of cable boxes. So all of those things are built into this laser TV. Remember, it has to have all the smart features that you would expect in a TV. Well, you got to get that sound out. Like for me, I have a, I have a sound system in this room. And while the, 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 the laser TV, the L9G, sounds really good, my $5,000 sound system is probably going to sound a little better. And, um, but now I can get the, the, out, the sound out. eARC is the same quality as a Blu-ray, correct? You are correct. Definitely is. And, you know, it's it definitely makes it for people like yourself that have a higher end sound system. 
and you're going to want that eARC output. That's for sure. Exactly. So, um, so if you have, so you have a Denon or Marantz receiver with a bunch of speakers connected or high-end soundbar. You can, you, it's the same quality from those streaming services. So that is something that is really, really cool. And as we mentioned, smart features built in. What smart, like you've, you've used different smart systems in the past. What is built into this one? So, well, it's an Android platform, so it does work with Alexa and it does work with Google Assistant, which, you know, depending on your platform in your house, to me, it becomes more seamlessly integrated. So I think most of us at this point understand how both platforms work. Um, you know, myself, I, I set myself up on all the Alexa stuff. So it's just my own personal opinion and my, uh, my point of view. And it works seamlessly. It's great. And there's a microphone on the remote. So you just right push the remote button. button. Yep, yeah. there's a, it's a smart remote control, so you can just talk right into your remote control to operate either one of those two platforms and you choose. Yeah, so you can control the projector, you can control other either Alexa-equipped or um, Google Assistant-equipped devices using right. the system. And you still have access to the large Google Play Store, which is packed full of um, TV shows, games, streaming services, and stuff like that. So the, the, the projector will just get smarter and smarter as time goes on, which is really, really cool. All right, now we've talked about the projector, but as you mentioned earlier that um, Hisense doesn't just send you a box with a projector in it, right? What right. else do they include when you, whenever you get this projector? Well, <clears throat> we see it as a system. So again, you know, depending on what screen you choose, our, the projector is gonna become packed with a matching ALR screen. So whether you have a very bright room and you need a more, we call it a daylight screen, or you have more of a lighting controlled environment, we have what's called a cine screen. But the screen mm -hmm. comes with the system. And we do that to ensure the performance of the product because it is a system. So, so let's talk a little bit about these screens. So the first one is there's kind of a hard screen, right? What is that for? So the hard screen is, is the Fresnel screen. So that's our daylight screen. So the advantage of the Fresnel screen is it's gonna be much brighter than the traditional lenticular screen. It's got a 1.2 gain in that screen. Mm -hmm. When utilized in a more well-lit environment where you can't control the lights, it could be your four season porch, or it could be an apartment in a major city that had this big window, just like the picture is right next to the screen. It's going to give you a very bright picture. It's going to be over 400 nits back to you. So it's very, as bright as a TV set. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, let's say, downsides of that style screen is the viewing angle. It kind of reminds mm -hmm. me of a VA panel on a TV set. So you do have, don't have quite the viewing angle as you will out of a lenticular screen. But then again, in a bright environment such as the picture, it's going to perform very well. And one more thing on, on the 100 or 120 inch screens that we're, we've talked about, we are a fixed focal length product. So you talked earlier about the edge to edge control and that detail. One of the reasons we're able to provide that detail is we know when we make this system, what size screen you're going with and what the lens should be like. So we're gonna get superior edge to edge detail versus sometimes you have items that can focus in or out. Yeah, and that's, that's something that I really have noticed after I started looking at your product is Sometimes they say, oh yeah, you can use pretty much any size screen, but, and it's good for up to this much, up to 120, up to 140. Well, if I, I can, um, because most of these are not, these lenses do not have adjustable focus, most of them um, a mechanical focus, um, they, there's only one size that it's really, really optimized for. Um, you can use it for the other ones, but you may end up with some softness um, in certain areas of the screen. So. The 120 um, unit is designed specifically for the 120 and the 100 is designed for um, the 100. And um, the, the thing about the, the, the light rejecting, this is because this, these, this type of screen is only designed to accept light from an extreme angle, this way, right. <laughs> okay? And it's trying to ignore, ignore everything else. The only reason why it's effective is because it's ignoring everything else. And if you get too far to the side, it starts ignoring you. <laughs> so right. That's the best way I can I can explain it. So, but but most of the time, the the viewing angle is more than enough for a family sitting on a couch. You know, if you want to sit way to the far side, then there's they have another solution for you. 
Right. And I would say I've seen both screens in action and I, you know, the daylight screen, even though it doesn't have quite the same viewing angle as the lenticular screen, mm -hmm. it's still pretty good. I mean, I had to sit way to the side to be that annoyed, to your mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like I said, it's a pretty complex um, uh, um, piece of material that we're talking about here, system that we're talking about here with multiple, multiple layers. Now, this is a fixed screen, right? It comes in a box a big box and it's fixed correct it is already assembled it's just pretty much mounting it on the wall correct right it takes about 15 minutes to mount. it comes out of the box it is completely assembled and fixed and ready to go um mm -hmm. i tell everybody it's about the size of a king size bed mm -hmm. roughly uh which okay. is a pretty big screen to put on the wall if you think mm -hmm. about it but yeah it's um it's very easy to install though and you know there's no assembly required which is i, I like that a lot Exactly. So, so it is so set up is quick and easy. Right now, but you have to think about if you're that New York apartment guy, you may go with the soft screen just to get it up the elevator or up the flight of stairs. Um, so that may be a reason why you may choose the other one as well. But that one work just as well in multiple environments. That leads us to the soft screen. So, can you talk a little bit about the soft screen? Yeah, we call it our, our center screen. So the soft screen comes in two different sizes. It's 100, 120 inch. It is assembly required. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come fully assembled like you would on the other screen. But mm -hmm. this is designed for a room that can have more lighting control. Light control can mean just your blinds or, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously lights in itself. It doesn't have to be in a cave. Mm -hmm. It can still be in a, a lot of customers or consumers' living rooms without a major issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and no, it's not near as bright, but the viewing angle is roughly like an OLED TV. I mean, that's mm -hmm. how wide that viewing angle is and a specific screen. So it's good in a, in a lot of environments. And I've seen this even set up in convention centers. And it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. And that's a very difficult environment to make anything look good. One thing we always want to stress is a projector has a certain amount of contrast capability or brightness capability. And what the screen is doing is based on your room environment and your use case, where are you going to <laughs> utilize that? Mm -hmm that capability so in a brighter room your eyes are going to be less sensitive to blacks and you're going to be more um you're going to want um, you want the brightness more vivid colors so the hard screen does this kind of moves it up the blacks may not be as black but you can't tell it's still going to look really black and the bright and the higher gain is going to make the colors more vibrant in a dark room you become far more sensitive to to uh to the black level and you're and then because your irises are opening up it your everything seems even brighter so this other screen pulls it down so you get better black levels um but it, it isn't going to be as bright but you're not going to need it as bright because you're in a darkened room and if it was really bright you can get a headache so so this so having both screens means that based on your environment and your need you can optimize it for your particular application which i think is actually so the, the screen is just to optimize the projector for your environment remember a projection system is a projector the screen and your room <laughs> and if you don't think about all three of those you're not going to get a great picture the sucker is fully packed when it comes to to features oh can you talk a little bit about what this filmmaker mode is so most people may not be familiar with what that is well, that's our that's our new picture setting inside the TV set to give you more of a cinematic feeling. Uh, I always say it's the way the movie was intended to be viewed, as the director slash producer made it. Right, that's how they want you to look at it. Okay, um, so yeah, so you get so you get so the image looks more cinematic. Right. Um, HDMI 2.1 features such as eARC, which is right. a HDMI 2.1 feature that is part of that system as well. You got your Android, your smart TV, your, your voice control, your HDR, your wireless music speaker and audio capabilities. It is a fully loaded piece. And as you mentioned, it's available in two sizes, right? Right, and we have a 100 inch, which comes in both the soft screen and the hard screen, because that's, um, that's as big as the hard screen can go right now. Mm -hmm. uh, talked about the reasons why then we have the 120 inch which is again only available in a soft screen okay okay so whether you so for 54.99 it's the same price with regardless of the screen that you get correct you just choose your environment whichever is best for you okay excellent and like i said it the the units do command a premium if you look at them compared to some laser tvs 
But if you try to compare it by feature by feature, and you start adding things such as um, a trichroma laser, all of the audio capabilities, eARC, everything else, plus the fit and finish, um, you'll you'll quickly understand when you see it um, why it's worth every single penny. And you guys have this new little program for those people who work. A lot of times, people these days um, are buying either online or maybe just ordering it from like a a Best Buy or a big retail like a Crutchfield. And um, but this you want to give them peace of mind. So can you talk about what this program is? Sure. It's well, we're we feel very confident in quality of the product and what you know your viewing experience in your house. So when you get this home, it's all fully installed. You can basically put it under review for 100 days. If you're not completely satisfied, you contact us and we will give you back your purchase price on the product. Oh, that's, now that's awesome. So. Right, and you're gonna return it to us, but I mean, yes, it, it's, I think it's a great program. It was supposed to end at the end of October. We've extended it through the end of November. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you guys even, like I said, if you look here, it says, you guys even issued the shipping labels and packing and return instructions so you could get it back. But most customers, I have, I like I said, I think this projector, the picture quality is outstanding. I will say that based on my experience, um, um, it is, especially after calibration, the best looking laser TV that I have seen has come across my lab. And I have tested by this time 10 of these, of these projectors and I was quite impressed with its um, performance. And like I said, its capabilities are outstanding. So, Mark, anything else you'd like to talk about before we let these guys go? Well, one thing I just want to remind everybody that yeah, you brought up the price, and these are a little bit more expensive, but our product is a complete system. So you don't have to worry about going out and getting a screen. You're getting the entire package together mm -hmm. at one shot. And we know screens are never inexpensive. So if you think of buying a system like our system, it's a great value mm -hmm. to get a 100-inch product for $54.99. Mm -hmm. And... We're, again, we're so confident you're going to be happy with it. We give you 100 days to play with it in your own house. Yes, and like I said, and the fact that you have two options for screens. Normally, the other companies even include the screen. You get one option, the one, um, and it's nice that you can really better fine tune the experience for your particular space. So, so Mark, thank you very much for coming and talking about Hisense's new L9G Laser TV. Thank you very much. Okay. To learn more about Hisense lineup of laser TVs, please check out Hisense.com and you can check out our reviews on this projector as well as um, older Hisense laser TVs at projectorreviews.com. So take care everyone and we will talk to you soon.